Here at Kelkenberg Farms, you can not only roam through the pumpkin patch, you can also go for a ride on one of the horses. The town says it's bags like these that are the problem. This thin plastic is no match for a rat's teeth. Well, Mark, as you said, with these freezing temperatures sticking around, a lot of people are relying on these, just everyday space heaters. Although these will keep you warm, they can also be very dangerous if not handled properly. The Broadway market, it's been a Buffalo favorite for well over 100 years, but it certainly had its share of difficulties. But what if some of those problems could be solved by moving it from here to here, the central terminal? Tonight on 2 News. The Miami Valley braces for a heat wave. I'm Chris O'Donnell. We're on your side with tips to keep cool as the mercury rises. And troopers go door to door looking for leads in a case involving the theft of a computer backup device. We'll tell you how to crack the case and protect your identity. Plus, musicians and fans gather on every continent for a history-making concert. How music is bringing awareness to climate change tonight at 11. These stories and more tonight at 11 on 2 News. The Wright State Raiders are just a few hours away from taking on the Pittsburgh Panthers in Buffalo, New York. Chris O'Donnell, who is in familiar territory today, <laughs> yeah. back home in Buffalo, he joins is. us live from our satellite mobile newsroom to bring you the build-up to the big game. Hey, hey Chris. Chris. That's right, Mike and Marsha. I know where all the Buffalo chicken wing spots are, but Wright State fans have been slowly making their way into HSBC Arena all afternoon, as many of them tell us they got on the road early this morning. As those fans made their way into Buffalo, they were greeted with this sign, which was placed on one of Buffalo's expressways. The 14th seeded Wright State is taking on the third seed Pittsburgh, a team that's been ranked in the top 10 most of the season. That also has a dominating presence in the middle in seven foot center Aaron Gray. But the fans who made their way to Buffalo say they're not too concerned. Well, we're pretty optimistic because, uh, you know, the coach, the new coach, he seems to be able to put together the right game plan at the right time. So I think he'll have them ready to play. I think the kids are excited, and I think they'll do everything they can to pull it off for us. I think if we can hit our shots and Deshaun's on and play good defense and try to keep the ball away from Aaron Gray, I think his name is, right? Yeah. And I think we have an outside shot at it. It would be awesome if we won. But even if they don't win, fans say it's still a great thing for the university that the team made it this far. Mike and Marsha? Hey, Chris, I hear, as there always is, there's a local connection with this competition? That's right. His name is Jeff Long. He is the athletic director for Pitt. He is a Miami University grad, and he's also a Fairmont grad from Kettering. And remember, tip-off is 940 tonight. For now, reporting live in Buffalo, Chris O'Donnell, 2 News, on your side. Chris O'Donnell still live at the scene with the still breaking details. Chris. Mark and Marsha, police and accident recreation specialists are still on the scene. The accident involved this semi in this red vehicle that you see behind me. Police tell us they were both traveling northbound when they collided. A woman was thrown from the vehicle and pronounced dead at the scene. A male who police believe was the driver was taken to Miami Valley in critical condition. The driver of the semi was not hurt. Police aren't sure yet what exactly caused this accident, but say witnesses reported seeing the couple arguing. Homicide investigators have been called out, and if they determine there was some sort of altercation in the car, police say charges could be filed. Right now, 75 northbound is shut down at Edwin C. Moses. And our reroute. Police say the freeway will be shut down for several more hours. So if you're going to the UD game tonight, you still will be able to get off at Edwin C. Moses. But keep in mind, give yourself a lot of extra time because all the other freeway traffic will be exiting with you. For now, reporting live in Dayton, Chris O'Donnell, 2 News, on your side. Tara Rice, who is blind, is one of the many frustrated residents who live at Park Manor, a high-rise run by the Dayton Metropolitan Housing Authority. Elevator service was knocked out around 3 a.m. Thursday and didn't return until after 12 noon on Friday. For many of the elderly and disabled residents, these stairs were the only way out. But the journey down these stairs were next to impossible for many of them, meaning they were trapped on their floors for over 36 hours. And what if I'd been trying to go down them fire stairs and he pulled, I would have fallen. Mm -hmm. And then I would have wound up in the hospital for injuries falling down those stairs. It was just very frustrating that you couldn't go anywhere. I had doctor's appointments. I had to cancel one doctor appointment. For Marianne Mueller and many residents, these elevators are a lifeline to the outside world. And she's frustrated staff left Thursday afternoon, despite the fact the elevators were still not running. When the 5 o'clock comes and it's time for them to leave work, they go and the heck with us. It's like, you know, out of sight, out of mind. We returned to Park Manor Friday afternoon to see if we could get some answers. We got a number of calls from residents last night about the elevator situation. So we're just trying to find out why 
it's been it was out of service for well over 24 hours. The manager would not talk to us on camera and did not answer our questions except to say the elevators were back in service. He referred us to DMHA's main office. Meanwhile, the residents say they're tired of feeling invisible. I would just like to see DMHA pay some attention to us.